G'day scrappers. Well, here we go. Today we've got our uh, first ever intelligent robotic vacuum cleaner. So someone once mentioned, when am I going to scrap out a robotic vacuum? And uh, as you probably saw in my one of my recent videos, I picked one up in uh, street scrapping in hard rubbish. So uh, I, don't, I don't think there's going to be a great deal to it. <laughs> Um, even though it's robotic, but uh, yeah, we'll um, we'll crack into it and just have a quick look at uh, what's inside. Um, also, got a interesting uh, mystery item in this box. So once I finish the uh, vacuum cleaner, I'll, I want to open up this mystery box and um, and see if we can work out exactly what uh, this tool actually did um, I've got a few ideas but it's very unusual and uh, it's very old uh, from the 1950s so probably the oldest piece of um, kind of tool like this that I've ever received I picked this up in a in a pickup job and um, you know, a part, uh, you know, on top of uh, washing machines and televisions and stuff from a regular client, they gave me this box. So <laughs> we'll leave that to the end and we'll have a quick look at what's inside and see if uh, we can actually work out what, what it is. So, all right, so I'm going to make a start on this vacuum cleaner and uh, the hard rubbish area that I picked this up from is actually finished now. I didn't go this weekend because I uh, had a birthday and uh, it was just a, a bit of a relaxing weekend, had a lot going on so um, I couldn't get out there and wasn't much in that area anyway. So now we've got five weeks uh, wait before the, the real street scrapping hard rubbish starts, the yearly stuff, so that's going to be really good. I'm going to get into it really hard. And what it's going to do is it's going to give me a chance um, for the next five weeks to really get on top of everything um, and, uh, yes, just start um, clearing out stuff and uh, give me a chance to um, really go hard once street scrapping really begins. And I'm going to really go for it, like, probably three days a week. Um, so my objective is to clear out the garage once again um, uh, the same kind of thing happened once street scrapping started and all that I my weekly you know through the week pickups my business kind of pickups I kept stuffing everything back in there and there, there are things that I've picked up that you've already seen on video that um, I've just left there so I've got to re-clean out that garage and then it's finally going to allow me to start scrapping out, um, you know, some stuff that have been hidden in there. And also, I really got to get to my furnace and start melting some copper, making some copper bars because I've got a backlog of uh, people wanting bars. And uh, yeah, I just want to get back into it. So uh, I'm going to, for once and for all, going to clean out that garage. And so I'm just going to dedicate the next five weeks to doing that and getting it all in top shape and uh, so let's make a start on this uh, robotic vacuum cleaner and see how we go so I'm just assuming that there's got to be some kind of circuit board in here something that uh, is going to uh, um, make it actually kind of work and think for itself um, I don't really have um, or know of any people that uh, are into building robot kind of stuff so I don't really have an avenue for giving away things like maybe these wheels that might be uh, you know handy wheels to make other kind of little robots um, uh, that's just a NIM H uh, battery pack so probably not much good there um, so I guess I'm just going to open it up and just keep undoing screws until uh, 
we get inside and I've already made a start and undone a few screws just just to uh, speed it up a bit because there's probably a lot of screws that are just for very small bits of plastic okay so these are little little brush here but um, just get this so it's like most vacuum cleaners it's all pretty much just plastic really um, normally I wouldn't uh, pick up any kind of vacuum cleaners uh, because you just end up with uh, twice as much plastic as you started and really you know very little value like vacuum cleaners sure they've got a motor in there um, but aside from the actual power cord there's really not much to a vacuum cleaner for uh, scrappers all right so i think i'm going to have to probably just kind of pry my way through this <laughs> try and get some of these components so well we've got a little brush just plastic rubbish the little gear mechanism for the uh, for the brush. Okay. All right. Well, they probably didn't put it together to make it easier to pull it back apart. We just want to get all this main brush stuff out and uh, get into the actual business of it. It's just going to be a bit of a rough. Yeah, here we go. All right. Well, <laughs> looks like the top's going to come off. a couple of wires and we'll do the big reveal all right well just a very basic kind of circuit board up here not a lot there LED or something. Yeah, not much of a circuit board really. Um, pretty much just a low grade. Yeah, just the um, just the little button switches, just the tactile buttons for the for the three knob uh, buttons there. So not much there. All right, well, pretty much just uh, some motors here, and um, that looks like the main logic board. So, a little uh, speaker. The robot must talk. But recently, uh, it was only uh, this week that um, a, a vacuum, a robotic vacuum cleaner got on the news where uh, somewhere in America where the police were called um, to a su suspected burglary and uh, it turns out the robotic vacuum cleaner was just stuck in the room in the uh, bathroom I think 
and it was probably belting against the the door or the wall trying to uh, move around and uh, the people thought that there must be a burglar inside <laughs> that's pretty funny and the, the cops came in they had their guns drawn and everything <laughs> uh. Okay, so it's just going to be this main long logic board that's pretty much the robotic part. Um, so it's going to be a <laughs> bit messy once I finally... As with a lot of these things that, that are new for me to scrap, you know, it, I probably look pretty awkward. trying to scrap the stuff out um, I'm going to just sort of bust my way okay yeah, just as you can see it's just plastic on plastic and it's you know it, it's not very um, you know there's certainly no value in scrapping it out and spending time in doing something like this unless you know you're into hobby electronics and you just want different components you've got some you know interesting motors and stuff um, but this isn't really something for you know a scrapper that's trying to make money or anything like that it's you're just not going to get any any value here for your time um, just want to see if I can get one of these out reasonably carefully. Might just have to bust my way out of this too. Ah, there we go. So, all right. Well, I cut the cables, but I suppose it could be repaired. But so. <laughs> that's the little robotic wheel it's got its own little motor there so I mean to a, a robotics guy or you know a hobbyist these would probably come in really handy so it might be something to consider when you're um, if you ever pick these up that you you know if you do know of someone that's into built making stuff like robots they might um, find this really handy there's another one there I mean it could still be repaired if it's something that someone wanted they could just resolder on some wire um, you can uh, splice fresh one on that and just resolder some wire onto this motor and there you go you got a little uh, robotic wheels oh there I'll just keep them just in case someone says, hey, I, I, I really like them, so they're here, but only if you, you want to come and pick them up, because I don't post stuff like that out. I just don't have time to uh, be posting out. Um, I don't even uh, have time to go to my P.O. box and uh, check any mail I get, so... Um, yeah, I just don't have time to go to post offices, so um, if anyone ever wants stuff like that, they've got to just uh, be prepared to come and pick it up. Otherwise, no go. All right, well. Oh, this is uh, quite an awkward scrap. I suppose I should just keep undoing some screws. But I really want to get to that vintage tool box um it's really bizarre um and doesn't seem to be anything like it anymore so hang around for that okay just another motor here more plastic. Okay, there we go. Well, 
there we go. <laughs> so that's basically the uh, the brains of the robotic vacuum cleaner. Just a yeah, just a, a reasonably basic circuit board. That's it. That's that's your robot brains. And the rest is just another motor. A um, couple little ones there. And that's it. Really nothing to it. And as I said, we just end up with uh, almost tw twice as much plastic. Is um, Wow. You now we'll get a little bit of uh, wire out of that. Actually, this motor might be uh, interesting to someone. It's got a very long uh, rod there. There you go. That's a very strange looking motor. So, um, yeah, not sure what this one would have done, but uh, that's interesting. These ones here would be, uh, yeah, like I said, because they've got these really cool little track wheels, uh, they look, almost look like off road tires they might be um, useful for someone but that's it that's our robotics vacuum cleaner really not a lot to it apart from this main logic board here where all the controls would come from and you got this little power board here um, and that's the only real circuitry in there so that was it guys oh, I've got a nice little on off button here you can also keep that and this little motor and a few motors in there that I might take out if I feel like it so that was the robotics vacuum cleaner now I want to show you this box that I just picked up safety fix now, this is uh, actually made in Australia in around 1957-58. Bit of a rusty old top, but it's the original box for this thing. And I just want you to, uh, if any of um, you older blokes can recognise what it actually is. Okay. So... Now this is this is a uh, one very interesting part. I'll get to the papers up there a little bit later. But if you can see here, it says explosive charges. Um, and here you can see these brass. They look like bullets, and they kind of are because they've. I believe they have uh, gunpowder inside them. And uh, they're like a little charge um, for this actual tool. Uh, so they're just like brass bullets, but they're not bullets. And in this part here, so there's actually still an original box of these, these bullet things. They're called 100 Safety fi Fix Blanks made specifically for use in safety fix fixing tools designed and made in Australia okay. so warrants only that cartridges herein are loaded to uniform powder weights 
And that's a very old Australian Victorian uh, telephone number. So there you go. And inside we have these cartridges. And it just looks like a packet of uh, bullets. I hope they don't explode on me. So there, there you go. And they've got, it almost looks like, you know, a hollow tip bullet. So in there, there's, you know, obviously it, it sets off a little explosion to force one of these nails into um, whatever they're repairing. So I think that as a collectible, I think it's a real bonus that there's an actual original packet of the consumable parts that you're actually buying, uh, that you're actually using. So I think this little box makes it, will probably make it even more valuable. And these are the fixing, like they're like nails, but they've got this little piece on the end of them. So that's really strange. Never seen anything like it. Obviously, maybe builders have seen this stuff. So, yeah. Um, and so, I'll just close this for now. So, anyone know what this really does? Now, this is uh, the paperwork on it. Um... So I can see that uh, this is a it, written 1959. Um, they're just showing an advertisement from 19 uh, or a Victorian, uh, the Government Gazette, 1959. Put an article in about this tool. So it says the only government-approved safety tool cannot be um, accidentally fired. Greatest pre penetration of all fixing tools no misfires will penetrate half inch steel half an inch of steel and that's all the little gizmos and um this tool actually cost i think it was about 59 pounds um back in the day no Oh, that's just the tool. It's a cartridge fixing tool. It was 29 pounds. In 1959, 29 pounds was a lot of money. Um, but I think the whole thing might have been... Yeah, there is, there's a builder's kit, a plumber's kit, and an electrical and maintenance kit. They cost around 70-odd pounds for the whole kit. Wow. So 70-odd pounds in 1950s. Uh, you could almost buy a bloody house with that. All right. So, last thing is just to get into this top here. So I really like that, explosive charges. I think it's quite collectible. And in here, we've got a bunch of the, the actual boxes of these nails and they're all different sizes so I think that's really nice as well um, part of the vintage collection yep big ones all just nails with those little kind of washers on the top and then there's some tools well, these are nice little short, sturdy ones. And then there's a... Um, well, there's a couple more of them. I'll just have a look. Okay. So these ones are interesting. These ones are actually got a thread on the end of them. So they're pretty cool as well. Wow. And if... Uh, you know, they've got a really pointy end. So... Okay. So they've got little nuts that go with them. So they're like repair fixing tools yep. and then here we've got a rack here with these different um, pieces here they might be the the like the bolt that sets off the cartridge 
here's an actual cartridge jet that's been um, activated and you can see the side has all been ripped out and it's just like it's brass and then there's two main tools or three okay so we've got this thing here don't know what that's for and this one is really interesting so it looks like it gets hammered from here which sets off the the cartridge because here if you can see there's still a cartridge wedged inside and I can see uh, I don't know if it's actually been um, it's activated because it hasn't sort of opened up it hasn't might not have been might not have exploded <laughs> Um, but it definitely it's been squashed down so it definitely been they've given it a go okay that might join onto that by the looks of it and then yeah it might put that and then your nail might go into that something like that and they hit it because obviously this is uh before they had really power tools that they could use so they would have you can tell it's been belted with a hammer so they would have belted the end of that and the cartridge is in there and it's sort of like i'm only guessing but it's sort of um yeah so they've hit there that set off the cartridge and set off an explosion and that would have forced the nail into the half inch of steel or concrete or whatever they did. I think they would have used it, they say it's a fixing tool so they would have um, probably used them for fixing uh, structures that have been damaged. Um, but that is really unusual, uh, especially for me to pick it up in a normal e-waste pickup. It's obviously been sitting in a workshop for a long time, and uh, they decided to uh, give it to me. And then we've got this little part here, which might be just a... Actually, that goes in there. So, yeah. So it's kind of like a makeshift gun in a way. That would explode. That's really bizarre. And there's still a cap in there. So the last one might not have engaged. And um, no one's bothered to actually take it out. But that's definitely the part where they hit. So there we go. How cool is that? Oh, it actually slides out. So this is like a like a barrel and it's got holes in there where the you know from the explosion the smoke from the powder or whatever would would escape something like that oh, and it's got kind of like a squeeziness to it for impact I'd imagine but that that is very bizarre. So if anyone really knows what it is, let us know. I, I, I've obviously, I've kind of worked it out. It's a fi I know it's a fixing tool. It's, um, but if anyone has got any more stories about them or know a bit more about them, you know, just um, let us know in the comments section. So there's uh, plenty of these. And um, I try to look it all up online. There's only, there was only one antique store that um, has got a couple of pictures of it but they um, they don't actually have it anymore so they must have sold it there's no other information online about it um, and the the pictures from that place that I saw they had uh, mm. they had similar day they had that part um, a couple of these bits and they did have boxes as well but they didn't have any of the original cartridges 
and so yeah I think this this box of actual a hundred cartridges actually uh, adds to the appeal so there you go guys that's my um, unusual mystery item for the day a uh, safety fix um, safety fix fixing tool so there we go all right well hope that was a bit of fun for you guys um, again if anyone wants to tell me about this safety fix hammer I'd love to know still in original crusty old box <laughs> I like how it's got safety fix on them but yeah obviously uh, being um, around 75 pounds back in the day uh, that was a lot of money so um, you know obviously would have only been used for uh, with uh, like a construction company would have bought this um, what do I do with it that's the question obviously I'm not going to just throw it out um, I want to put this into the right hands and uh, maybe preserve the uh, the actual uh, item because uh, you don't get many high-end building tools like this so there we go guys all right well I hope that was a bit of fun for you we did do our robotic vacuum cleaner and uh, a few bits and pieces here not a lot if anyone's interested in these wheels they can have them if they want to pick them up or this little motor um, but that was all there really was useful from the um, robotics vacuum cleaner and now I'm just going to um, start on actually getting onto this garage and empty it out so uh, over the next couple of weeks you'll uh, I'll probably make a quite a few videos out of the garage and uh, finally get an empty space to start getting into my gold recovery stockpile stuff to sort a lot of that out sort any stuff that I shouldn't have in there and um, also get into melting some copper so guys hope that was a bit of fun for you keep scrapping and I'll catch you next time